We're going to look now at the infraspinatus in the long axis view. Therefore, we place the hand on the contralateral shoulder. That makes the tendon uh, nice and, uh, and uh, uh, taut going around the shoulder like this. So if I had to visualize the tendon, it comes up, you see, very obliquely up. So it doesn't do this in the transverse plane, but it goes obliquely, goes up. And it, it goes, wraps around the shoulder and it inserts here on the uh, greater tuberosity. So this is more or less the angle that we will use to scan it. So the probe will go more or less in this direction. So let's look at the image. We start here at the uh, place where we see the humeral head, right here. That's your first landmark. We go a bit more medial and we see the bone of the glenoid. And next to the glenoid is a hyperreflective structure that actually lets sound beams through, so it's no bone. This is the labrum. In this case, we see a a very nice triangular shaped uh, structure and if we do a little dynamic maneuver like this we can see on the image that uh, the labrum stays in place yes uh, let me scan it a little bit better you see the labrum is not moving uh, it's staying in its place okay now we have the, the glenoid we have the labrum we have the humeral head with the cartilage now we go one layer above this here is the infraspinatus all this and in the center of the uh, infraspinatus we already see a nice hyperechoic line that is the um, uh, epineurotic expansion that will if we follow this distally we should end up on the tendon so we're going to try that now we're going to follow this hyperechoic line we're going to follow it follow it follow it follow it further now and you have to go you have to go quite far you see now the last bit of muscle above it is disappearing and we should be left here with just tendon we go further 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 and this is a really pretty image uh, we see the cartilage here it stops here and from here to there this is the footprint of the infraspinatus as you can see this infraspinatus goes all the way till here covers the whole facet here of the um, Infraspinatus, so the whole footprint is covered by tendon, and that means that there's no tear, that it's uh, completely uh, intact. Okay, so we go back again, same maneuver. This is actually a very nice example. Uh, we go back, 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 and now we move the probe a little bit uh, uh, cranially. So I go from this position, I go a bit, a bit more cranial, like this, and then you can see in the bone of the scapula. I'm here in this position. Let me see if I can scan that a bit better. So there we have the, the glenoid again with the labrum. This is the bone of the scapula. Go a little bit more cranial. Cranial. Let me scan with two hands for a second. Sometimes it's hard to find it, but now we see it. It's a little bit vague, but it's enough for me to make my diagnosis. This is the bone goes down, comes up here, so this is a, a notch. And in this notch you have the suprascapular nerve, the, uh, and the suprascapular nerve here can be entrapped because of labral tears, uh, fluid can come out and they can form a cyst right in this location. So that's why it's important to look here for any cystic structures that can press the nerve and usually they give um, a loss of strength of the infraspinatus. And uh, that's it, that's the infraspinatus.